what I should start out with, especially if I'm going through the trouble of drawing Feynman diagrams, is a reminder of the elementary uh, or primitive vertexes. Primitive vertexes are what illustrate um, what represents the elementary interaction in uh, for each of the interactions. So, um, so this is in the like, recorded lecture videos. But as a reminder, I will draw primitive vertexes or vertices, just gonna say vertices. For QED, it's pretty simple uh, or electromagnetic interaction, it's pretty simple. There's really only one, uh, charge of the particle comes in, charge of the particle goes out, interacting with a photon. That's uh, the elementary vertex for uh, electromagnetic interaction. Um, and for the strong interaction, QCD, technically it's super complicated, but I'm going to pretend that it's a simple. And if I draw anything, just to stick to the simple version where um, I have a quark coming in and the same quark going out, that's the simple part, that the type of quark won't change in a strong first interaction. And it interacts with a gluon. And QCD is actually complicated because these gluons, they carry color charges. So um, gluons can actually interact with other gluons. I'm not gonna draw any of that. I'll just pretend that they don't exist for our purposes. So uh, for our purposes, QED and QCD will be treated basically the same. And that's because they respect the same conservation laws. So as far as consideration of conservation law is concerned, we are fine treating them more or less the same. The weak interactions are the interesting one. Um, there's one that I can draw, but I won't draw often because it kind of ends up showing you the same process that could happen by uh, QED or QCD anyway. That's the weak interaction that's mediated by the, the neutral weak boson, the Z boson. And um, I don't think there are any, I mean, so that diagram is always present. And if you're doing actual calculation, you would uh, worry about it, especially in context where the QED background is low. But again, for our purposes, where all we are doing is check for conservation laws, uh, we don't worry about this, uh, these vertexes so much. What we do worry about are the ones involving charged, um, charged W bosons or charged uh, weak bosons. So um, let me draw it uh, two ways. So you can have one type of vertex that involves leptons. Um, so on, as an example, you could have one involving electron and electron neutrino. And electron turns into neutrino emitting the uh, W boson. Uh, I'm just gonna use register looking thing for W boson. So that's one possibility. And uh, quarks also interact, uh, participate in weak interaction. And the vertex involving a quark would look something like this. You will have one type of quark coming in as an example, an up quark. And that could uh, turn into its uh, counterpart in the same generation, the down quark. And there's a change of charge involved here. A quark has charge of plus two thirds E and down quark has charge of minus 130. So for charge conservation to work out at this uh, vertex, you would need to have a W plus uh, boson going out. And uh, there are other variations you can apply to this, but these are the starting point for primitive vertexes. So um, with each of these interactions, I where I want to start is kind of well, uh, let's uh, draw, uh, let's uh, describe the interaction. So interaction is proton plus colliding with an antiproton. And we are asking the question, can that turn into proton plus neutron plus antiproton? And, um, and if you're checking conservation law one by one, which you can, um, you can go one by one saying, okay, conservation of charge that is not violated. So we are fine there. 
conservation of angular momentum. <laughs> uh, that's a tricky one. I'm not sure if you would see it in the um, Feynman diagram either. It that would be violated. Um, I will explain after I after attempting to draw the Feynman diagram. Conservation of baryon number that is violated. You start out with a zero net baryon and you start, end up at one net baryon. So that's being violated. Conservation of lepton number we are fine. Zero leptons, zero leptons. Conservation of strangeness, we are fine. No strange particles, no strange particles. So you can do that. And I think the question is written intending that that's how most people would do it. But <laughs> let me take this opportunity to show you how the Feynman diagram uh, show, um, shows you the impossibility of satisfying some of these, uh, did I do? impossibility of satisfying some of these conservation laws. So when I'm drawing Feynman diagram, this is what I would start out with. I would start out with uh, the external particles, incoming particles. So I have um, each baryon are three quarks. A proton is up, up, and down quark. An antiproton is, uh, well, antiparticle versions of that. Anti-up, anti-up and anti-down. And uh, somehow uh, we have to end up at this. I have to end up at a whole proton. Up, up, down. A whole neutron. Uh, up, down, down. Um, the way I remember, which may not help, is um, there's an old symmetry called isospin that used to describe, well, still describe symmetry between protons and neutrons. Proton is the isospin up particle, and neutron is the isospin down particle, if that means anything. Uh, let me finish drawing. Uh, I need to draw the antiproton. So antiproton looks like this. And I think uh, you can begin to spot the issue here. You have an imbalance. You have an imbalance between um, particles. You have three particles, three quarks coming in, and three antiquarks coming in, and then somehow you have to end up with six quarks going out, and three antiquarks going out, and there's just no way this pairing would work out because if you look at any of these vertexes. Um, they don't create any net particles. At most, what you could do is something that looks like this. You could have a photon or gluon that would split into a particle-antiparticle pair. Like that, you could do. But in, in none of these processes are going to create extra particle in excess of antiparticles. So... So uh, that's why conservation, of, and, that, and that is uh, really the, the source of where we say baryon number must be conserved because you have that balance of quarks and antiquarks and uh, here there's no way to resolve that. Um, conservation of angular momentum is a hard one. Um, I guess this is my best uh, way to explain it which is that um, without getting into quark business, I mean, we can, but without needing to do that, uh, what I can say is that this combination is a spin one half combination. And this combination is another spin one half combination. And when you add these two, then um, you have two possibilities. You could get spin one or you could get spin zero. Uh, in fact, yeah, yeah, so you have that. and. You, on the right hand side, you have a spin one half, spin one half, spin one half. And um, these are three particles, they really only have two potential possibilities for magnitude of total spin. They could all add up to either uh, three halves, all adding kind of in the same direction, or uh, one half, two of them canceling out and one, um, standing myself or uh, so those are the possibilities you can see how none of the possibilities here matches up with any of the possibilities here so there's no way so there's no possible way to conserve angular momentum so 
uh, sort of a spin angular momentum. So there's a real problem here in with trying to conserve angular momentum. So that's A. And let me see if I can reuse some of this for B. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, B uh, looks, wait, does it? No, you know, it does not look a lot like uh, A. So let me uh, redo from scratch again. Uh, let me just erase some of this stuff. And I'll uh, start by, again, um, I'm going into more detail than I need to, mainly because I want to attempt to draw Feynman diagrams. <laughs> um, and I do this and do all of this not happen? You know what? I, I have a lot more opportunities for drawing Feynman diagram today. I'm noticing that these are all does not occur, does not occur. And uh, Feynman diagram drawing is just so much more fun when you can actually draw them. So let me just answer the remainder of the question without trying to draw Feynman diagrams that I can't draw anyway. So, so let me just do it the way that I was saying that was possible in one way it was meant to be done in, uh, as in um, you just to go through a checklist of each conservation law. So I have this process here. So let me check each of these conservation laws. Baryon number conservation. Okay, I'm looking at it. I have two baryons on the left-hand side. Notice that they are both particles. On the right-hand side, I have a baryon, antibaryon, and then a baryon, and then meson. Uh, you should remember that pion is a meson. So on the right-hand side, I have a zero plus one, net one baryon. So yeah, baryon number would be violated in this interaction. It looks like I'm trying to produce out of this interaction an extra antiparticle. I can't do that. Now I can produce a pion by itself. Uh, there's no such thing as meson conservation, meson number conservation, because mesons are made up of one particle, one quark and one anti-quark. So, um, so yeah, but that's not the direction we are being asked about. Lepton number, we are fine. Conservation of charge. Uh, you know what, I think we are fine. I have plus one here. These two add up to plus zero neutral and pi plus has a, that plus one charge. So I think conservation of charge will be fine. Strangeness I'm fine, angular momentum. Yeah, so this is where it's good to have memorized a lot of particle properties. <laughs> um, if you haven't, you know, you would look it up on a particle data group website. <laughs> so um, I think uh, most of people here should know that protons and neutrons are spin one half. The only question would be what spin does pion have? And when you look it up under meson tables, pion is in fact our first uh, particle. Um, it, the table tells you, um, let's see. I, I'm pretty sure is isospin, so I don't want that. Uh, J here. Oh, wait, did I never teach people how to look this up? I probably didn't, um, but I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the lecture that pions are spin zero, um, <laughs> or th there's a table of particles in your textbook that has that too. If you, but if you want to use this source, the way you would do it is that this set of symbols actually tell you um, what the deal is. So um, I don't know if I remember what G stands for. Um, G is something that I don't remember. I'm pretty sure I stands for isospin, and one means that pion is in an isospin triplet state. J stands for angular momentum, and it's J, not L or S, because the convention in physics is that J is stands for total angular momentum. And you know these particles being made of quarks, there can be an element of orbital angular momentum. So they call it J. So J matches up to zero. That's what this symbol is telling. P is a parity. It's something called a parity number. Um, something that's supposed to be only, oh, I guess, yeah. P is called a parity number. And if there's time today, we'll get to it. If not today, we'll probably get to it on Friday under something called the follow parity. And the pions have parity number of minus one instead of plus one. So 
knowing that pi on has zero spin allows you to answer this question on whether this process would violate con conservation of angular momentum. And the answer is yes, it would, because you have spin one half plus spin one half, the possibilities these are one or zero. And on the right hand side, you have one half plus one half plus one half plus zero. So the possibilities are either one half or three halves. Those don't match up. So would it be violated? Okay. And for CND, I think it's important to remember that um, uh, it's, uh, we are looking at reaction by strong nuclear reaction. So some of these reactions may occur through weak interaction, but strong nuclear reaction respects a certain conserved quantities that weak interaction want as we talk about in introduction of strangeness. So this interaction, pi meson plus a proton probably colliding, turning into sigma plus, I think that's a baryon, <laughs> and K meson. Um, yeah, so this is where it's good to have either good memory or nowhere to look stuff up. Let me find a sigma baryon to prove to myself that it is indeed a baryon, because um, there's nothing from naming convention alone that will definitively tell you what's a baryon and what's a meson. Uh, I, I think uh, maybe there's a rule, but um, if there is, it's not all that super evident to me. So sigma is a baryon. And let me find a K meson in this list. There's a K meson here. They are both the strange particles. So they both uh, have, uh, they, they are further down the list because this listing starts out with uh, particles without strangeness. Uh, all right, uh, there we are. And uh, while we have this, it's good to know, um, so sigma plus should have strangeness of minus one. Right, right, because strange quark carries strangeness of minus one. And uh, what particle am I looking for? K minus. So K minus has a um, strangeness of, well, it has a strange quark in it. So it would have strangeness of minus one. So both the sigma baryon and K meson have the same strangeness of minus one. Oh yeah, so it would violate conservation of strangeness. There's nothing strange here, strange suddenly, strangeness of minus two on the right-hand side, so. Okay, let's look at the rest. Uh, conservation of charge, uh, pi minus plus proton, that's zero. Um, yeah, charge is fine. Lepton number, we are fine. Baryon number, we are fine because proton and sigma, they are the only baryons. Um, conservation of angular momentum, I think we are fine. Uh, K meson is probably spin zero. So it's like spin half, yeah, yeah, I think, so I think it's only this one. Conservation of strangeness is, is what this process is violating. And in fact, even for weak interaction, uh, this would be so much harder than regular uh, because you have, you, you have to violate two units of strangeness. So that's gonna involve more vertexes than other possibilities. Um, oh, maybe I should draw Feynman diagram for that. Let me do that after answering D. So in D, I have K minus, okay, same particle I looked up before, plus proton, plus lambda. I have a feeling it's a but baryon, but I don't, uh, I guess if it's baryon, it should have a strangeness of minus one because the baryons don't have antiquarks in it. It can only have a strange quark in it. A strange quark, not strange antiquark. So yeah, minus one. So plus N. Okay, so when you are looking at the strangeness wise, I'm fine. This says strangeness of minus one. This says strangeness of minus one. So strangeness is actually conserved. Um, so let's keep looking. Uh, angular momentum should be fine. Uh, spin one half, one half, and you know, um, I think, let me look at lambda to be sure. Yeah, lambda is a spin one half particle. Um, conservation of Charge um, minus, so charge is conserved. 
OOIC, conservation of variant number. Both lambda and neutron are variants. So on the left-hand side, I have net one variant. On the right-hand side, I have net two variants. So that means um, I have some anti-quarks here that's disappearing for no reason, and I need to get additional quarks that I have nowhere to get it from. So I think that's uh, uh, all the answers. So um, oh, did I miss one? What did I miss? This doesn't violate strangeness. Um, or a lepton number. Or charge. Oh, you know, it violates angular momentum uh, because, okay. I don't know why my eyes glossed over and I thought this was pi. Um, it's a spin one half plus one half. So they add up to either zero or one. Um, so conservation of angular momentum is also an issue there. Okay. So, so C is not, oh, sorry, D is not something that I can really draw, try to draw a Feynman diagram for because this is a process that simply wouldn't happen at all. But I think C may actually be a possible process. So let me try to draw a Feynman diagram. It's going to be one that's involving weak interaction, um, but it, so let, let me try drawing it. I don't know if it's possible. So pi on plus a proton going into sigma plus plus uh, negative k on. And, um, oh, oh, uh, and from knowing that this has a single uh, strange quark, I can guess what its a quark composition should be. It should be up, up and strange. That's the only combination that'll add to the charge of plus one. And for k minus as well, knowing that it has a um, strange quark in it, one strange quark, not anti-strange quark, I know the other quark or anti-quark must be anti-up because that's the only way I can get a charge of minus one. Okay, um, so with that, let's uh, see if I can draw a Feynman diagram. Oh, oh and uh, let me uh, write in the quark content of the other ones as well, up, up, down, and pi minus, um, and trying out combinations of up and down with a particle and antiparticle in my head. And I think the only one that will do work is anti up and down. Yeah, so they add up to the charge of minus one. Okay, so um, I'll just draw the quark lines first. And if I need to move some of them later, I will move it. So anti up and down, that's the pion coming in. And I have proton coming in. Uh, that's gonna be three quark lines up, up and down. Um, let me draw K on near the top first. I have anti up and a strange um, arc line, anti up and strange. Um, and the sigma plus, I have strange and, oh, oh wait, let me do it this way. Uh, I'm gonna draw the two up quarks first, uh, up, up and strange. Oh wait, am I in trouble? Oh. Um. Well, I'll just have to be careful in drawing it. So the uh, up, up and strange. So really what I have to take care of, and I'm uh, looking at the lines to see how I can, should connect them, are these uh, strange quarks. They somehow have to uh, come from an up quark on the left-hand side, because the, that's a, a vertex that looks like this that I'm looking for. Instead of up going to down, it will be up going into strange that can and does happen because of skewed generations. <laughs> um, so I have these two up quarks. So I guess they are connecting to these strange quarks somehow. Um, and, and yeah, down quarks are turning into the up quarks. Okay, so let me um, try to draw it this way. So. I'm going, so I think these can uh, just connect each other. They'll just be spectator quarks, anti-up coming in, just becomes anti-up on the way out. 
nothing really changes there. Now this up quark, um, ah, I think this is how I can draw this interaction. Let me move some of these around, uh, knowing that I will have to change their binding association later. So I can pair up these two this way. Um, so this down quark turns into an up quark while emitting a negatively charged W boson that carries away the minus one charge and up quark, the charge conservation works out that way. And this W boson is absorbed by an incoming up quark, which in doing that becomes a strange quark. And I can do the same thing here. Let me just uh, move this around so that, uh, so that it's easier to draw diagrams without lines crossing over each other. Uh, this up quark turns into strange quark uh, emitting a W plus boson. And this W plus boson being absorbed by down quark um, the down quark turns into the up quark and the charge conservation all works out. And I'm using this language emitting and absorbing, but just to be clear for these virtual particles, um, you should, uh, um, the time sequence of these are arbitrary. It, in fact, um, it, so the, the Lorentz invariant formalism um, treats it so that it doesn't matter which direction the W boson is going. Um, so. So while I'm saying using the language of emitting and absorbing for the purpose of simply um, saying out loud what's happening, I want, don't want you to take it too seriously. So yeah, that's the diagram. Um, now, there may be other possible diagrams. And if uh, people are doing actual calculation, then they would uh, take the trouble to find all the diagrams, make sure to work out all the terms. We are not doing that. We are just drawing it kind of for fun to make sure that, hey, it's a possible process by weak interaction. So for weak interaction, this process can absolutely happen. Um, so this is the pion coming in. This is the proton coming in. And I'll have to be careful in organizing this. This up quark combining with this will turn into K minus. And this up quark combining with the rest hadronizing uh, will turn into sigma plus. So this is the one, at least one of the Feynman diagrams for the weak interaction.